So the talk uh, we're going to uh, deal with today is on Prometheus data analysis and event notifications for progressive delivery. Uh, I'm Ravi Hari, uh, Principal Software Engineer at Intuit. Uh, so uh, let me give a brief of uh, who we are. Uh, we are uh, Intuit. Uh, we founded the company in 1983. And uh, uh, we've gone IPO in 93, and we are at 19 locations. I'm working out of Bangalore. Uh, we had uh, 9.6 billion revenue last year and uh, have about 100 million customers. We contribute to a lot of projects in the open source. So let me give a brief uh, about Argo. Uh, Argo is a sort of a Kubernetes native tools that uh, manage uh, uh, running of jobs and applications uh, in Kubernetes. It basically makes uh, uh, running these uh, jobs and applications seamless. So uh, it goes with the tagline of get stuff done with Kubernetes, right? Um, Argo uh, adopts this GitOps paradigm for continuous delivery and progressive delivery, as well as uh, it enables to run MLOps on uh, Kubernetes. So there are multiple projects in Argo, uh, like Argo CD, Argo Rollouts, uh, Argo Workflows and Events. Today we are primarily going to talk about uh, Argo rollouts for progressive delivery. So what is uh, Argo rollouts, right? It's a open source Kubernetes deployment controller. It's a drop-in replacement for uh, deployment uh, that we get default out of Kubernetes. And uh, it supports multiple strategies like Blue Green and Canary. So let's delve a little bit into why uh, we needed Argo, right? Uh, the the out-of-the-box deployment uh, controller that we get in Kubernetes provides uh, uh, two type of strategies. One is recreate, the other one is rolling update. So with uh, uh, neither of them, uh, we will be able to do uh, blue-green or uh, canary or progressive delivery. That uh, is one of the reasons why uh, Argo rollout stepped in and uh, it provided all these different functionalities. So uh, let's delve into what these blue-green, canary, and progressive delivery are uh, a little bit uh, in detail. So let's start with blue-green. Uh, we have, say, version one, and uh, uh, let's say we have two services, uh, an active and a preview one. You know, also call it as stable and uh, desired, uh, and both point to the first version uh, initially. And as we bring in the newer version, uh, the preview points to the revision two, uh, and uh, if we test it out and everything looks good, then we can promote the revision two to be the stable version, and then the traffic from uh, service in stable also goes to the latest version that is revision two. And then once we are comfortable with the revision two, we can delete the old set of parts. So this is how blue green generally works, right? Uh, how do we qualify this in Argo rollouts? Uh, in Argo rollouts, we specify this with uh, you know uh, a rollout uh, object, but with the strategy of blue green. And then we specify the active service, previous service, and stuff like that, right? Uh, let's look at uh, Canary. Uh, in Canary, uh, we have, say, revision one, and both stable and desired services point to revision one initially. But as we start uh, deploying revision two in Canary, the traffic percentage uh, is get split uh, into revision two based on the number of pods that we create in the revision two. Say, in, uh, in a set of four pods, uh, if a new pod uh, gets created in revision two, 25% of the traffic goes into that. The, the difference between this one and the rolling updates here is that uh, rollout provides you with a lot of features to control this uh, uh, you know, revision two at this particular point and do uh, your analysis and testing. Uh, and only when you feel comfortable, you'll be able to promote it. Whereas in deployment, it continuously keeps uh, updating the newer deployment uh, newer pods, as uh, uh, the uh, newer pods are stable, it terminates the uh, older versions and it brings up the newer ones continuously. Whereas Argo rollouts with Canary, it provides you with the ability to pause here and do your analysis. Now, once you are comfortable with this, we can promote uh, more percentage of traffic. And uh, after a certain point, we can delete the older version and completely uh, step up with the newer one. So how do we specify the Canary deployment? We qualify that with a Canary strategy, and then we uh, give the weights to it. And the weights uh, can, have, uh, 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 can be distributed into different steps. Uh, each step uh, can have uh, a different weight percentage, and uh, we can qualify the 
pause duration, however long we want, at every percentage of weight distribution that uh, we are interested in. Now, uh, an extension to this canary is uh, ALB canary. Uh, we have seen that uh, uh, you know the percentage of traffic is dependent earlier only based on the number of replica pods that uh, are coming up in the canary. However, if you want to do traffic routing as we are doing canary, what we could do is uh, we can configure ALB canary and we can split the percentage of traffic uh, that we need to uh, send uh, to the uh, newer version, that is revision two, and uh, we can control it uh, by configuring this uh, in, in the traffic routing with our rollouts uh, using ALB Canary. So initially, we can probably send five percentage of the traffic, and later, once we are comfortable, we can completely send the traffic and uh, completely shift uh, uh, the stable revision also to send the traffic to revision two uh, after everything is uh, stable. Uh, how we can specify this? We can specify this uh, with the traffic routing uh, configurations in the Argo rollouts, as we have seen, and uh, uh, the analysis templates can also be used here to uh, analyze uh, how your traffic uh, is uh, behaving uh, with the newer version of the pods, right? And uh, in the ALB ingress, uh, uh, what we get is that, if you see that there is an annotation that is introduced as the percentage of the traffic uh, gets uh, moved into the new revision, uh, based on the set weight percentages and the steps that we give, the weight here in this uh, ALB ingress for the desired service gets updated, and uh, accordingly that, percent, that percentage of traffic gets routed to the revision too. So this is how uh, ALB ingress uh, with uh, Canary works. Uh, we can configure this with uh, various types of other ingresses like uh, Istio or Nginx and other things. Argo Rollouts provides the uh, plugin capability. Now we have seen different types of uh, blue, green, and canary, but what is progressive rollouts, right? So the ability to introduce observability into delivery process uh, and uh, controlling the blast radius uh, of our delivery uh, of the newer deployments uh, constitutes primarily the progressive delivery, right? So uh, what we could do with um, uh, progressive delivery is that uh, we can enable metrics uh, that uh, we are interested in to monitor as we are uh, uh, as we are progressing uh, with the revision two or the newer version of the deployments of the applications. And we can qualify which kind of metrics and conditions are successful and which are failures. And uh, it, we can also enable auto promotion to the newer version completely in case of blue-green deployments, or uh, we can roll back in case, uh, in case of uh, the canary uh, continuous analysis, if in case the newer version fails in any one of the step, we can automatically abort it and roll back to the previous step. So, uh, so this, uh, all these things constitute uh, into progressive delivery, and Argo Rollouts provides uh, this automated features uh, out of the box uh, uh, for you. So let's look at uh, what kind of uh, data analysis we could do with uh, Prometheus uh, to qualify uh, a progressive delivery for, uh, uh, for an application, right? So uh, let's understand how this works uh, internally in Argo Rollouts. Argo Rollouts itself is a controller that manages these deployment objects as well as the rep replica sets uh, and the services, ingresses, and stuff like that. On top of it, uh, Argo Rollouts has a, uh, an embedded uh, analysis controller wherein we can uh, uh, define an analysis template as it goes through the list of the steps uh, that we defined in the analysis uh, 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 in the analysis portion in the canary strategy or in the blue-green strategy, it would uh, take that analysis template and uh, uh, convert that into an analysis run. And at the time of analysis run, it goes and fetches the data from the desired uh, metric provider. It, uh, primarily, we use uh, Prometheus in Kubernetes. So uh, it goes and fetches the data from Prometheus and then ensures if uh, uh, you know, the conditions that we specify for success and failure, for example, the total number of requests that are successful or failed, or uh, for example, the CPU usage on a container uh, or the memory usage on a container should be less than some 80% and stuff like that, all those different sets of uh, conditions that we want to qualify for a successful promotion, they can be evaluated and then uh, roll out uh, proceeds further uh, into the next set of steps uh, as, as these analysis run continuously in the background or in line. So uh, how we define an analysis template? An analysis template can be uh, simply put, uh, can be defined like this, wherein we write some Prometheus query. Uh, we just declare uh, the Prometheus uh, URL that uh, we want to look for in the cluster as an environment variable. 
uh, our analysis template can be as simple as this. Primarily, we just have to write our query and the condition at which we want to qualify it as successful, right? But uh, if you want to get it uh, a little more verbose and uh, write additional details into it, we can qualify that. Uh, we can specify the uh, Prometheus endpoint URL uh, and the port in which uh, we want to run and uh, how many times we want to run this analysis as well as uh, uh, at what interval we want to th run this analysis uh, run. All these things can be specified uh, and these can be injected into the uh, canary or blue-green uh, relevance. Right? So in, in blue-green, uh, where we can use this analysis runs is primarily uh, pre and post promotions. So primarily, uh, once we deploy the revision two, before we promote uh, our traffic completely into the newer version, we can run all uh, analysis checks and ensure uh, the newer version of the pods are all successful, uh, successfully uh, updated and uh, there is no issues. After we switch the traffic, we can again run the uh, post promotion analysis on the pods and ensure uh, nothing breaks and uh, everything is successful with that. So we can uh, add these pre-promotion uh, analysis and post-promotion analysis with analysis templates uh, and uh, we can query the data from Prometheus and then uh, ensure uh, our uh, uh, applications are stable after promoting to the near version, right? This is in blue-green. How about Canary? There are multiple ways. One is uh, in background analysis. When we qualify uh, the, uh, with the strategy canary and uh, uh, write the analysis uh, on top of the steps, it keeps running continuously for all the steps that we have defined. For example, we have defined set weight 40% and set weight 60% and stuff like that. So at every step, uh, it continuously runs this analysis and then ensures that uh, the newer version of the pod uh, or the application is stable uh, at that percentage of uh, canary deployments, right? And in any case, it fails, it automatically rolls back to the previous version that uh, we already have uh, and our guru uh, uh, already keeps uh, 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 in memory the hash value of that uh, replica set. Uh, how about uh, the other approach? The other approach we have is inline analysis. Uh, in terms of inline analysis, uh, what it uh, does is it's like a blocking step. Uh, after every, st every step that we define, uh, it uh, stops uh, uh, the rollouts uh, there and then it does this analysis at that time and then gets back data uh, and uh, qualifies whether that analysis run is successful, only then it proceeds further, right? So this is how uh, uh, an inline analysis can be done. This is primarily used uh, if we want to do some uh, kind of uh, quick checks uh, uh, where uh, uh, you know more some heavyweight uh, processes like uh, if you want to run some benchmarks at 40% of the traffic or 80% of the traffic and ensure everything works fine with your newer version, this can be done uh, with the inline analysis. So we have seen analysis, right? Uh, it, when we want to bring observability to uh, uh, the application developers, uh, it's not enough if we run the analysis. We also need feedback, right? Uh, let's say developers uh, update uh, their uh, GitHub repo and uh, they want to fire and forget, right? But uh, uh, it's also good uh, to notify them if everything uh, went successfully fine or if something uh, uh, had a problem and stuff like that, right? So events uh, uh, in this case uh, re is really helpful. So uh, how does uh, events work uh, with Argo rollouts, right? So again, extending to the previous architecture that we have, uh, Argo rollouts also embeds uh, a notification engine. It's a controller in Argo project now. Uh, basically what this events does is, uh, let's say if we run analysis, we generate an event whether that analysis is success or failed. Let's say if we uh, complete the rollout, that is an event that we generate. Or if we update a step in the rollout, that's an event that we generate. All these events uh, that we generate uh, and write into the uh, event recorder uh, will be pushed to notification engine. And notification engine can then send based on our subscription to any one of these uh, channels, right? It could be email, it could be Slack, Telegram, uh, PagerDuty, or Obscene. All these are integrated and many more are also available. So uh, we can choose which uh, notification service we want to be uh, get uh, qualified with and alerted for uh, based on the type of the trigger that uh, uh, we are interested in. So let's look at what it takes to configure uh, events in uh, our rollouts, right? 
So the first thing that uh, we need to uh, set uh, is, uh, this is an example for Slack. Uh, we need to set the Slack bot token and the secret for the Argo rollouts. And then uh, we need to set the config map. In the config map, we consume that token. And then uh, we write a trigger for one of the conditions that we are interested in for which we want to get alerted, say rollout completed. And then uh, we want to send a message to the Slack uh, with all the details. So we, we write the message in the Slack format. Uh, if it is an email, we can write uh, the message in an email format and stuff like that. So uh, we, we configure our config map uh, with this data. And then uh, in the rollouts, we qualify uh, with the annotations uh, that we want to get uh, notified on a specific channel. Right? Uh, so we, re we subscribe to specific uh, uh, triggers. And those triggers, uh, we can qualify this. Uh, this was until recently we were doing like this. And we realized that uh, if we have to subscribe for multiple channels for same set of triggers, uh, the cardinality here is high. And our rollout object becomes very uh, clumsy. Right? Uh, it's not uh, pretty neat. So what we have come up with, we have come up with a new feature in uh, notifications with a new annotation where we can uh, uh, call that uh, annotation as subscriptions. And uh, here. Uh, for a common set of uh, uh, triggers, if you want to get notified for uh, multiple uh, Slack channels or multiple services, uh, we can define them. For example, uh, in the second case here, uh, in the first case, uh, we are getting notified for uh, rollout updated and rollout completed on a Slack channel. But in case of failures, we not only want to get uh, uh, updated on the Slack channel, but also email, uh, then in the same annotation, we can write it uh, uh, with the new service uh, uh, description here. Right? So with that, uh, we get notified in case of failure events and stuff like that. Uh, let me uh, do a quick demo. Uh, So uh, I'm just put forwarding uh, the metrics here. And then my Argo rollout is running here. Uh, let me show you uh, the Argo rollouts uh, object. Uh, this is similar to what we have seen uh, earlier. Uh, in case of rollout updated, completed, or rollout paused, I want to get notified in this channel. Uh, in case of uh, analysis uh, successful or rollout aborted and other kind of failure scenarios on analysis, I want to get notified in the data analysis channel. And I want to get uh, emailed on this uh, email. right? So uh, in terms of uh, rollout specification, this is a canary strategy. And uh, in the canary strategy, uh, I have set weight percentages and pause durations uh, here defined. And uh, here, this is a success. Uh, case for the analysis, and uh, here I have a failure case for the analysis. Uh, let me uh, let me run this here quickly. Okay. Uh, uh, let me show you the Slack channel here. So uh, this object has been uh, created. Uh, uh, I'm not getting updates. Let me show you my recorded video. I just took a backup uh, in case, uh, for whatever reason, the internet connection is not great. Uh, let me show the demo in my recorded video.
Yeah, so uh, this is the object that I have just walked through uh, just now. And um, let me proceed further. So let me go ahead and uh, deploy this. Uh, yeah, so now that uh, we've deployed uh, the Argo uh, rollout with a bluer version, you'll see that uh, uh, an event got generated uh, here. Uh, and now what I'm doing is I'm updating from version one to version two, that is from blue version to green version. Uh, now when I deploy, it would also execute the analysis because this is uh, promoting uh, a newer version of the pods. So you see that we are getting notifications for uh, the green version of the pods uh, in the rollouts demo where uh, we, we have subscribed for rollout updated or rollout uh, 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 you know, uh, completed. And uh, in case of analysis, as we have seen just now here, if the analysis is successful, we got a notification here uh, that uh, the analysis job, uh, the, the analysis that was successful, we got a notification in the data analysis channel. Uh, we'll also show you uh, what happens in case uh, if there is a failure, uh, right? Uh, so uh, on paused events, again, we are getting notification in another channel. Uh, so, uh, when we go through the rest of the steps, there is a failure uh, step that we have defined. At that step, it would fail. And uh, there, uh, we would uh, see a notification uh, coming uh, primarily uh, for us on the data analysis channel. There you go. So here, uh, if you see, the, uh, the analysis failed. And uh, we have aborted the rollout. and we switch back to the previous versions. Essentially, we are getting notified uh, with different color patterns. All these things you can configure in your uh, uh, config map uh, on uh, uh, the colors and schemes and stuff like that. Uh, you know, we have qualified two notification service channels. One is Slack. The other one we should also get uh, in email. Uh, let me quickly show you that. Yeah, so uh, I'm getting notified uh, in my email. So. At this point, uh, this was uh, for the previous one, and the latest one is here, where uh, initially the first analysis was successful, and then we ran into an analysis failure. Uh, so we got an event here, and then the rollout got aborted. So uh, that is how uh, we can configure these notifications and uh, immediately get uh, alerted and look into what has happened, right? Now, uh, uh, Now, uh, these channels here, it need not be limited to Slack and email. It can be pager duty, it can be Obscene and others. So uh, we can get alerted if there are SRE folks in the team or uh, you're taking an on-call on a particular day, you get notified and uh, you can fix the problem immediately. Yeah, that's pretty much uh, uh, what I have today. Uh, any questions? We have, we have time for one question, I think. My browser froze, so I can't check the time. Any questions? Oh, we have five minutes, perfect, thank you. Any questions? We don't bite, unless you don't wear a mask or something. No questions? There we go. So uh, thanks for the presentation. Um, what I what I miss from the receivers from the alerts, uh, especially because we're on the Prometheus day, is the Prometheus alert manager. Uh, do you have support for that? Because in the, in the end, I'm thinking that the, the purpose is to have one tool for controlling all all, all the alert rules and and, and so on. Because uh, yeah. I couldn't write a configuration for every event channel, et cetera, et cetera, so. We have support for uh, Alert Manager as well. Yeah, okay. Uh, because Alert Manager, uh, I, I thought in Prometheus Day, most of the people will cover it, so I was just showing the other channels. Yeah. 